Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. How's everyone doing? It is the Earthmaster here on this Saturday night, March 25th, 2023. It's about 1018 here in the PM, Saturday night. Latest earthquake activity on the globe here shows a 3.7, also a 1.9. 1.9 Alaska, 3.7 over here into the Puerto Rico area. Seeing a little uptick here across the region of the Caribbean plate. Let's go ahead and check that out here as we zoom into the USGS map here. Uh, aside from the typical swarming area, we are noticing a little bit of movement kicking up here into the Dominican Republic area. Also the Mona Seamount up here showing some uh, seismic activity. Uh, looks like a couple threes, even a 4.2. This one pretty deep though, 140 kilometers here just off the coast of the uh, Dominican Republic area, so we'll continue to watch that. Uh, this isn't the only area of this plate that's showing some movement. We're also seeing some activity off here to the west. Costa Rica area seen an earthquake um, earlier this evening as well with a 4.9 or 4.1, 69 kilometers deep, uh, and also some activity further up north here off the coast of Mexico into the Middle America Trench. So things are starting to light, uh, lighten up here. Uh, as far as earthquake activity goes and it is showing up here on the earthquake 3d globe as well so keep an eye on this region around the caribbean plate uh, down into the south america region things look like they're fairly active as well but mostly confined to a cluster and a portion here around the peru chile trench uh, some fours and fives here over the last 24 hours and it uh, looks like these quakes are getting a little bit deeper uh, the last one at 4.6 267 kilometers deep so we'll watch this area here for some uh, potential movement upstream. All right, uh, what's going on here in the States? Uh, not a whole lot of activity, according to the USGS up here. Uh, into the Pacific Northwest, got a couple small microquakes around the area of the Cascades. Uh, Northern California, got one earthquake south of Mount Shasta here, a little 1.5, 9.3 kilometers deep. A ways away though from uh, Mount Shasta here, about five miles or so. This is the only one that's showing up here on the map. Beautiful volcano. I can see it on a clear day here from uh, down where I live in the Sacramento Valley. All right, uh, what else do we have? Bay Area looks fairly quiet. Um, movement down throughout the rest of the state, uh, fairly minimal. You can see most of the activity here, all microquake movement. Uh, I don't think we've seen anything above the 2.5 threshold throughout the state of california aside from that 3.1 off the coast here of eureka way early this morning and out into the pacific ocean things are relatively uh quiet uh, minimal activity out here along the west coast for now and i think that's just an overall trend here of movement along the north american plate or lack thereof of movement here against the plate boundary the yellowstone area let me see what we got here for yellowstone and most of the time when things are quiet out here along the west coast uh, up against the craton here and the north american continent is fairly quiet as well and that looks to be the case out here not a whole lot of earthquake activity uh, across the region today uh, into the alaska area let's see we've got a couple smaller quakes here through the aleutian trench and the cook inlet area nothing major going on across the mainland up here uh, a couple scattered twos. The largest quake in this area looks to be a 4.3 coming in earlier this evening. That along the Aleutian Trench here. Slight uptick in activity uh, across this region. Also, uh, still seeing a little bit of movement across the volcanoes here. The Tanaga and the Takawanga Volcano. We did see a 3.0 pop up here into that swarming region earlier. Although uh, most of the activity there in the smaller range of magnitudes one earthquake off the coast here of taiwan a 4.4 10 kilometers deep here uh, into the western edge of the philippine plate see what we got going on here across the emsc model globe uh, starting to spread out a little bit notice that we're getting that westward shift here north westward shift of momentum and pressure looks like it's finally starting to work its way up here around the java trench right now this earthquake activity very minimal um, i do expect though uh, with this type of uptick uh, and the quietness actually that we've seen in this area 
to to see something a little bit on the larger side out here very soon. Uh, the latest earthquake of 4.5 into the northern edge here of the Java Trench off the coast here of northern Sumatra, Indonesia uh, was 4.5, 65 kilometers deep. So we'll continue to watch that. We really haven't seen any large scale movement here in this area uh, in a little while. Let me bring up the 6.0 and above. Uh, we're just going to go here. Of course, we did have some activity a couple years ago, but I do want to check here just in the last year. Uh, I'm going to draw a little rectangle out here on, on the map. If I can figure out where I'm at. There we go. And this is going to be roughly around the Andaman Sea southward, the northern end here of the Java Trench. Kind of curious to see uh, when the last good-sized quake was out here. <clears throat> so it looks as though... Um, and these are just somewhat moderate quakes for this area. I think a lot of folks know that this region is very capable here, the Java Trench, very capable of producing some very large earthquakes. Um, so if you want to go in the most recent largest one so far, it looks like a 6.9. Um, back in November of 2020, uh, 2022, uh, but that's still kind of at towards the middle edge here, the middle section of the Java Trench up north. Uh, a couple earthquakes it looks like from uh, last year as well. Sixes appear to be the number. No sevens or eights in there. Historical data though is uh, definitely uh, got some large earthquakes out there. So we'll continue to watch that region uh, for some movement. Bring back the USGS map here. There we go. Um, let's see what else we have across the Middle East. We got one earthquake here into the Iraq area. Or Iran, excuse me, 4.8, also 4.5 over here. That, uh, where's that one at? That's way in Indonesia. I'm trying to get this one. Turkey, 4.3 from last night. Doesn't look like there's anything major going on out here across the Mediterranean right now. Uh, or the Turkey area. Mostly smaller microquakes in this region today. And uh, tonight as well. Atlantic Ocean looks fairly calm. 4.7 from earlier today. So let's see what we got down here into the Tonga area and the Kermadec Trench. Noticing a trend of activity across this area. Um, definitely all of this from today, just after midnight. Had some fours and even a five. Most of this relatively shallow movement, except for uh, this deep earthquake here into the Tonga Trench. That was uh, about two o'clock this morning for a Goodness, 522 kilometer deep, 4.7. So getting some adjustment up around the bend here. Uh, we should see some activity up around the Tonga Trench, the subduction level area. Uh, but also, uh, we're already seeing the signs of it stretch up around the bend here. Uh, so we'll keep Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea in check as well. Uh, that is uh, an open gap area as far as seismic, lack of seismic, seismic activity goes. Keep that in mind. Uh, down into North Island, New Zealand. Looks like a 3.2 coming in. Uh, I don't believe we see anything major going on across the New Zealand area currently. Two hours ago, 2.6, 2.5. A couple other smaller quakes there as well. There's that 3.3 into the uh, uh, southern end of the Kermadec Trench about three hours ago. Nothing major popping off here. Quick glance at the earthquake drums here confirms the um, very minimal activity across the, the uh, New Zealand currently all right uh, let's see what else we got here across the area of the earthquake 3d globe here trying to see if there's anything out of the ordinary looks fairly uh looks active but definitely uh Noticing a couple different trends here that are taking place. This advancement along the northern end of the Java Trench. Elevated activity here across Taiwan. And um, I think the big, more noticeable one tonight is going to be the uh, Caribbean Plate here. Middle America Trench uh, and the Caribbean Plate. Areas around Puerto Rico shown uptick. Definitely on an elevated scale. All right, uh, let's see here. Trimmer map here tonight along the Cascadia subduction zone. 
69 epicenters here of trimmer. Looks like a little bit up outside of Seattle and Olympia and a little bit down into southern Oregon here outside of Medford underneath these areas into the Cascadia uh, subduction zone. No major earthquake uh, activity to report there. No major trimmer movement. Actually, it's been a little while. You notice that? Uh, look at this gap up here since our last elevated trimmer. Uh, our last, you know, somewhat elevated trimmer uptick was back in October of 2022. Now the sequence here, if you look at the sequence of numbers, there's, uh, you know, some regular intervals here. Uh, and I know 2021, towards the end of 2022 as well, these intervals were getting much closer together. But it looks as though um, this year, starting off relatively slow here, far as that... Uh, interval level goes we should um you know according to past historical data here we should see that start to ramp up again um, i'll be surprised if it doesn't but it's been relatively quiet here for 2023 uh, in terms of elevated trimmer uptick all right space weather activity as we look at the space weather information site here solarham.net Looks like we're entering into the uh, uh, blackout here of data. It's always around this time. Always, <laughs> always pick the right time to uh, see that blackout. Uh, looking at the UV filter rays here of the sun. Shows some numerous sunspots. A little coronal hole it looks like here. Let's see what we got. This coronal hole 88 is gaining some strength it looks like. Getting a little bit broader. It is in position here, center disk of the sun, lined up perfectly with the Earth-Sun plane. We'll watch that here as it rotates in the view and possibly uh, grows here in the coming days. That uh, could enhance some uh, geomag geomagnetic storming conditions here later uh, this later next week here. Uh, let's see what we got for flaring activity. Fairly minimal. Um, looking at the current solar flare magnetic structure still watching this region right here uh roughly about the center portion does look like it's uh a little bit unstable around this area in fact this whole little uh, section here of sunspots looks a little on the uh um uh it look kind of looks like it's grown a little bit since this morning's update uh, in terms of complex structure of these magnetic fields we'll watch that though uh, throughout the uh, night and tomorrow uh, but it doesn't look like there's anything major expected from any of these sunspots 90 percent chance for c flare m flare at 10 x flare at 1 and uh, there's our three-day forecast looks fairly minimal not seeing a whole lot of aurora potentials for now that could change and uh, let's see what else is there I think that's about it for space weather. Um, the uh, let me go here to my uh, storm prediction center. There's a, a good chance of some severe severe weather out here tomorrow uh, into portions of the south once again. Um, just south of the regions that got hit with tornado tornadic activity here last night. Got to be very cautious of this. It's turning into. Uh, Pretty broad scale event potentially stretching across uh, a number of states. You don't have to be specifically in the orange enhanced area to see a tornado risk. The 5% chance for tornado risk extends, well, as you can see here on the map, eastern Texas all the way here across four or five states. So tomorrow's going to be a severe weather day for many folks here uh, across areas of the south. You got to make sure you have your weather radio uh, and um, pay attention to what's going on with the local forecasts across your area uh, right now it looks as though the main threat um, aside from that tornado potential is going to be damaging hail uh, across portions here of louisiana mississippi alabama area all seeing a, a good 30 percent chance of some large hail, larger than two inch diameter within 25 miles of a point so again that is tomorrow um, be on guard for that uh, severe potential all right, folks, have yourself a good night, a good evening, and uh, we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow sometime.
Until then, take care. Stay safe out there. And um, have a good one.